What's up, everybody? Episode 35 of the Pitside Podcast. We've got a great episode for you this week. We've got from our hometown heroes, the 410 Division Champion, Blake Chapman, and our 305 Champion, Nick Vickery, on the podcast this week. Plus, we're going to get into a whole bunch of other stuff, so if you stay tuned, we'll get started in just a minute. Welcome to the Pitside Podcast, where we discuss the latest news and developments in the G-Force Racing League, as well as other racing news inside and out of iRacing. Now here's your hosts, the Aylid Outlaw, Preston Cranmer, and Roger the Bassman Craig. So we're back, and uh, it's it's been a great week. So we have just, uh, you know, the charity event was technically last week, but Roger and I have just finished kind of finalizing everything. It always takes a few extra days because we had sponsorship money and things to kind of move around because we always end up getting to make an extra donation. Uh, so we've done that today. We found out that we've raised a total of, I think it was 1600 and some change. I don't remember exactly. Um, but 1665, I think. Yeah, and you know what? And, and yeah. I, I kind of hate to say it, but I think we far surpassed what we were we were thought we were going to do from the start. Um, but, it, but it really started off with uh with with the teams stepping up to sponsor the the race like it was it was yeah. surprising to me I, I reached out to a handful of teams uh and just told them like hey like Christ sim racing is interested in doing this you you guys do it with us and uh just about everybody that i asked you know stood stepped up and said yeah let's yeah. Do, let's do this and um so it was again i not because i don't want to toot my own horn here it was spartan uh spartan racing um now I'm going to blank on all of them. It was uh, Gambler Motorsports. Yeah. Gambler Motorsports. And then Phantom Fa- Motorsports. Phantom Motorsports. Thank you. And Yeah, so, I mean, these guys, yeah. did I miss one? Well, you, you, you missed, uh, um, uh. <laughs> Are you sure? Sort of the, I'm, I'm losing my mind. No, the wraps. The, the oh, yeah, of course. Of course. VMR. Race design. Veloc- velocity. V- yeah, and, and Velocity stepped up, too. And the other, and the, uh, the other V1, VMR, yeah, and Epsilon Sprint Wraps. Yeah, so, but again, you know, it started with that, and then everybody just f- fell in line, and I, I was, I was, I, early on, we were seeing guys make donations of like 50 and $75 when, when they could have spent 10 and just raced, you know, and uh, it's always very encouraging. I think we'll continue, not, of course, not every event, but we're going to continue to support our veterans because it's obviously something that our, our league cares about. And uh, yeah. we, we know it's a worthy cause, and, and so it's it's really cool. Um, so yep. ju- just after our charity events were ending last week, uh, on the heels of that was the Indy 500, which I know I watched, and, and Roger and I were talking about that. So just I, I, I know it's not really our league stuff, but, man, what an incredible moment. You know, I, I, I've grown up watching IndyCar, especially the Indy 500. Watched just about every year. Had the privilege of, of working some of the races at RIR when they had, there was a few years where they had tracks there and met some of the drivers. And um, so, so pretty familiar with Elio. You know, he, he went through a, a, you know, he was with uh, Penske, and they very quietly kind of removed him from the team and put him in a sports car program. Uh, and, and he, he, pretty much made known that he wasn't real happy about that and got a ride with a, a team that had just started IndyCar racing last year. And so to come in and win this, and it's his fourth, and it's just this, like, it, it reminds me, like, one of my favorite movies of all time, Sports Moments, is Miracle, right? You know, from the 1980. It, it just it just had that same feel to it. It's just a, who who could be against him? You know, it was, it was really awesome. Yeah. So I've got a bit here. I was, when I was a kid, I'm, uh, you know, I I followed the indie like religiously. Like I'm talking about, I'm going back to Ed, when Eddie Sachs was killed, and and uh, you know they had the um, object uh, Mickey Thompson uh, cars with the little tiny tires, and uh, you know the the turbine cars and all that sort of stuff. So I I used to used to go to the show. You had to pay at the, to go into the show to see it because it was like uh, um, pay per view. Basically, it was a, the early days of pay per view, and I'm talking like '60s. 566 and then you know I, I kind of drifted away from uh, Indy uh, quite a bit and then I started watching that race on Saturday and uh, you know and, and and he's coming up and it's just uh, you know pulling for the old guy and uh, but I, like the man should be in it, uh, one of those motivational speakers like what a positive positive person 
that celebration afterwards, uh, I had tears in my eyes. I mean, it was just one of the most memorable things I can ever remember in sports. You know, I, the only other one I could think of in racing would be maybe when uh, Dale Earnhardt won the Daytona 500, you yeah. know, and everybody's lined up in the pits, you know. But uh, what a great, what a great moment. I mean, he's 46. He was just charging. He ran halfway down the straightaway, just waving to people like, I, I would have been on the ground sucking air, like, it was just, uh, you know, and just, and, and I saw some interviews after, and he was still wired, like, he was, it was just awesome, that was awesome, 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 that was just a great moment in sports, and I'm really glad I, I you know, watched it. And and you can't say enough about IndyCar in general, like, the, the race itself was incredible, I, it, it, it's something, I don't watch much NASCAR, and, I, and at the moment, I don't even watch a lot of IndyCar, but you know comparing the two there was intrigue the whole race like the strategy mattered from the start of the race and it was it was just it, there's there's action going on in the mid pack there's action going on at the front there it, I, credit to the announcers they knew what was going on so they could accurately yeah. kind of portray like who's why you don't want to be out front and why somebody somebody like Herta went straight out front early um, and, and it was just it was a great race to watch um, so really awesome and I, I know I think the night before you had been watching uh, one of your one of your guys Dylan Westbrook oh, yeah. yep out at the, yeah Lake of the Ozarks and uh, for the second night in a row I watched it Friday night and Saturday night and uh, you know as they call it cowboy up I mean it was I remember I saw uh, one race at um, last weekend beginning of the season something nowhere near that bad I mean Ash Weekend does a phenomenal job, but you know, early in the year, it's you know, it, sometimes it's tough getting the track. That was ridiculous. Um, so uh, you know, Dylan, Dylan Westbrook, who you know, I'm a, a huge fan of Dylan, uh, but uh, he finished uh, P3 and he, well, he had he set a track record on the Friday night, and um, I was top qualifier again the second night. Uh, started, I forget where he started. Doesn't matter, but oh. They must have had five starts, try to get one lap in, and probably destroyed six, five or six of the top cars. And then, and then in the midget race before, um, some poor bugger was you know in for the two minute repair, just gets mm -hmm. out and the push truck comes around, and slides off the back uh, push bar and goes over his tires, his right rear, and I think his uh, right front. And the, the pickup truck went probably five feet up in the air and then came crashing down like and ruined the guy's night. It didn't destroy the car, but it ruined the car. Just like, I, I don't, you know, I was talking to John Hine about it and he says they're, they're known for, you know, evidently it's like a limestone base or something. It's just, you know, it's a like a lot of people, I, I'd be surprised if they go back. It was just, uh, it, it was really bad and, and hope that, and thankfully nobody got hurt. But um, you know, cars were destroyed. I mean, it was it was ten thousand to win. So guys, you know, they're not they're not going to put them in the hall, or they're going to try. But there's more than ten thousand dollars in damages. I'll tell you that. But uh, yeah, so um, and that and another event too happened. Um, uh, a team in blue is joining the Washington uh, Capitals on the golf course this week. You know, that total collapse again. You know, I I, I will probably die. And, you know, I'm still, you know, one of the only ones on the earth that have seen the Leafs win a cup, you know. So well, it's just uh, I'm assuming a bunch of losers. I'm assuming you're bringing this up to get ahead of it because you had to know that I, after last week that I was going to bring it up. And honestly, now that I now that we're talking about this, it's kind of funny. This is not planned at all. You're you're sitting there in the red, and I'm sitting here and looking like I'm in Maple Leaf blue. So that's pretty funny. But but that no, I, you know I I I have some uh, what, what we consider family. They're not blood relatives, but we consider them family that live in Toronto, and it's a. Uh, there's a there's a girl in the family that's close to my age, and we had a run and bet for a while, um, uh, where we basically would just bet five dollars, and if 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 I won, so the the bet was who would do better like throughout the season. So if it was in the playoffs, who you know who made it the furthest? If they made it to the same round, who won the same number of games? You know, we had this kind of system down, right? And so. So every there was we did it for like three years and the caps narrowly edged them out every year. So she would send me five 
Canadian dollars, right? So I'm getting a little, I'm getting gypped a little bit already. Uh, so, but Boy, I, th- a lot. I, I think it was after the third year she was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Like I'm tired of sending you my money. So I've always yeah. kind of kept up with the Leafs anyway. Obviously, they're a storied franchise, and I love hockey. But there is no doubt <laughs> that that. They're, they have a reputation for choking, but this this may be one of the bigger ones. It was uh, it was something <laughs> else. It, uh, man, what, well, you know, I, I used to be a huge, I used to be a huge hockey fan. You know, I coached hockey for 15 years, and and um, uh, but I've gotten away from it. But I watched, I watched. I think it was Game Four where the Leafs won four nothing. It's just spectacular hockey. Like every goal, like Price didn't have a chance on it. But like I, this was the team that probably had the chance to do something and just <laughs> like they they don't just lose they blow they you know they're up three games to one but anyway this is a racing show we shouldn't be talking about this for too long but I <laughs> I thought I'd get ahead of it and bring it up before you did yeah so, I, yeah I see um, what you did there <laughs> yeah but yeah you know and, and talking about the charity event um, what a phenomenal event and, and and you know we've said it over and over I maybe a worn record but. Uh, I think we can touch on it a little bit too. Um, we had a discussion today. Um, I know uh, it was funny. You and I were starting to talk. We're planning. Obviously, we're planning next season, and we're getting now into the nitty gritty and you know details of the schedule, not just the high, you know, the thirty thousand foot level. We're down now, pretty low, and uh, we thought we started talking about the charity and what you know when are we going to do it? What do we do it for? Um, and during that conversation, uh, Dan Blau reaches out to me about, um, uh, I'm going to screw his name up. Um, Brody Sim. Brady Sim. Brody Sim. Brady, yeah, Brady, Brady, Sim. Brody, 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 Brody Sim, who actually applied to our league three days before the accident. So in case you're not aware, Brody Sim... Um, just a young kid. I just saw, uh, we'll post on the launch, this interview he did probably an hour before his accident. Just, I think, I think he's like 14. I'm not, not sure how old he is, but um, this well-spoken young man who has, um, I think he's had cancer on his tibia, uh, like three bouts with it. Um, and it's gotten past that. And they, you know, he's talking about that in the interview. And then he goes out and, and they haven't really released the details of, you know, the severity of the injuries, but it's, it's, they're, they're already saying it's going to be a long road back. So I think we've identified, you know, our next charity. And, and, we, and, and in fact, Press and I were talking about that, you know, I had already designated a Steve King Knight for, um, uh, for, for Hometown Heroes. And that was really just, to, you know, just the recognition and the awareness of that. But uh, along with, I think for sure, you know, um, I know we're just coming off the heels of a charity, but I think we've already identified the next one, and we just uh, prayers go out to this kid. Um, it's just uh, a, a tragic event, so uh, you know we'll be following that, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, the league again can step up and help out. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, I guess that's enough to say about that. But anyways, uh, that that we are talking about that, and I think it's. Um, it would be certainly a great cause that's for sure yeah yeah and it's like i like you said we'll do that through the steve king foundation and and they're great yep. like they they i i think most people probably even even some of the people that help us run stuff don't realize how much they help us facilitate things um to make it easy for us to make donations right because it's setting these things up if we can do it through gofundme it's easy but outside of that and so the steve king foundation sets it up so that we can just go through a gofundme and people can make donations and so hats off to them too and i i know when we we're going to be reaching out to them shortly and they're they're going to be all about it you know they since since day one when we've re- you mentioned to them hey we want to do a charity event they've been behind us 100 percent um and so you know whether whether it's for for brody or something else if if you're ever looking for something like that the steve king foundation is a uh, is a wonderful wonderful charity and they they do nothing but help other people yeah so so going back to him you know he he's been eye racing for a couple of years and uh, and like i say just applied to the league like three days ago or three days before this injury so hope to see him in the league you know um but uh, but but that awareness night was really just making people aware of just how important the Steve King Foundation is. You know, like like you say, we just we raise the money. They're the ones that reach out to the family and do that. They're well experienced at that. Um, 
you know, and they've gone through it themselves. So they can relate to a lot of that. But we don't, you know, we're kind of arm's length away, which is great because uh, they know how to deal with these situations and they're the ones that make contact and, and, and manage that whole thing. So anyways, that's uh, that's coming in the new season. Uh, so, um, you know, the, thank, thank God for people like the Steve King Foundation because, uh, you know, they help a lot of people, that's for sure. But uh, we should get on a higher note now. You know, it's a... That we got two great interviews coming up, uh, two champions that uh, you know uh, were crowned tonight, and uh, Nick Vickery with the 305s, like you said earlier, and um, uh, Blake Chapman, Mr. Skittles, um, and then the other one, uh, interestingly, um, who won without being there. So you know uh, the the uh, legend cars uh, of the four race series with one drop week, uh, and uh, Lane Snook uh, didn't even have to show up tonight. Uh, you know that it was a it was a it was a close um, battle. Yeah, it uh, came down to ten Nick points. Vickery, yeah, and Nick and it was funny. Nick and uh, Daniel Vaught both, you know, were vying for the three hundred fives. They were also chasing Lane for that one. So uh, it was good. Uh, I had a you know panic tonight because uh, uh, your dad and I were uh, were in front of um, Dan Vaught, Dan. Uh, so. We didn't want to cause any issues, and, and we didn't. Thank God, so we survived that. But oh, um, you caused some yeah, issues, just some... not in that specific circumstance. Well, what what issues did I cause? Well, maybe not you, but Dad. But I, I well, hopefully he but, doesn't watch this far into the podcast. So I got into him once, and then he flat took me out. And he says he says he lost control, but we'll see what the review committee has to say. I know your dad quite well, and he he has full control of his car at all times. So, I'm I'm sorry I'm sorry, son, but it must have been on you. Well, I'm, I made I, well that well, well I, I made guys, a joke last guys week. Stick together. I made a joke last week about getting grounded, and that you know obviously I'm too old for that. So I think this is what happened instead. So you know, but uh, but yeah. anyway. So let, let's jump over and talk to these guys. You know, we're we're at the last last week of the season here. We, we obviously want to say thank you to everybody. It's been a great season. I think, um, you know, we haven't had some of the bandy boys around as much as usual, um, which obviously that, you know, they're welcome back or, or whatever the case might be. But yeah. um, it's it's yeah. been cool to see some guys that aren't usually at the top at the top. And, we, and it's been well spread out the, between divisions too. You know, Stephen Goldner is usually just – trying to you know make andy shipping trophies a lot easier and and so going to be a little bit more difficult this season but it's it's gonna it's been a great season so uh let's let's go over and talk to a couple of our champions we're going to start with uh with uh nick vickery here who won your uh your 305 championship and then we'll jump right into the uh the 410 champion with blake chapman but uh as always, thanks everybody for watching. It's uh, it's it's great to, to get the feedback from you guys every week, and uh, we'll see you back here next week. And we are here with the hometown heroes, 305 champion Nicholas Vickery. How you doing tonight, buddy? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. It was a uh, it's a good race. Tight finish. Yeah, that was uh, that's probably the tightest one uh, I think we've had uh, this season is uh, the, between you and uh, uh, Daniel Vaught. So uh, it was uh, going into tonight. It was uh, it was a tight run. You had a bit of a break. Uh, you know, unfortunately, Daniel had a, a heat EOL, so uh, he was kind of behind the eight ball and put some pressure on me because he was behind me for the heat, and I didn't want to cause anybody. Uh, me and. Uh, 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 Preston's dad, Mike, uh, we were both uh, in front of him and just like, you know, that's the last thing we want to do is ruin somebody's chance. So, uh, but it was a, it was a great, great season. And uh, I just want to congratulate you on that. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, um, I noticed uh, in, in some of the other stands, you're, you're second in the uh, Rebels, but uh, we were talking before we went live here and you were saying you, you don't really have a chance to catch uh, Garrett, you don't think. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he's been fast all season. Um, you know, and I think he started the, the this season in uh, the C and um, moved up to the B um, and then, you know, stayed for the championship, which, again, I don't blame him. You know, I mean, if you've got a chance to fight for the championship, stay where you're at, you know. Um, yep. But, yeah, I think he's won, like, the last five races uh, that we've had. So he's definitely been on a roll this 
at least in the second half of the season for sure. Yeah. And uh, how'd you make out uh, in our uh, the charity events? I mean, I, I, before we even go there, before we even go there, I got to talk about the raps. The raps, you guys knocked them out of the park. And uh, you were saying that you did the pro-late models, and uh, they were stunning. Like, uh, it, they were just uh, kick-ass, man. They did a great job. Yeah, but, uh, they, um, we, we, we came into it, you know, thinking obviously on our team, we've got, you know, Canadian drivers as well as U.S. drivers. Um, so we were trying to incorporate, you know, both both sides of the coin, really. Um, so, you know, on mine, I threw on a couple of designs and, and trying to come up with something in my head. Um, and the, what worked out was just having the flag tearing off on the rear quarter uh, both, on both sides. Um, yeah. So I'm and then the everybody, good. yeah, and everybody's numbers uh, were unique enough that you could tell the difference between the cars. So uh, that worked really, really well. You know, and that's but, that's um, one thing. I think this this event alone, like we saw more guys get out and put special wraps on their cars than any other event. It was super cool. Y'all's those late models were one of my favorites. Y'all's and uh, and I guess it was Carenta's. Uh, he had one for his sprint car that was really cool. Yeah, yeah. but there they was, did there look were, really good. There were bunches of them out there, and I, I, you know, it's cool to see everybody jumping. Everybody's donating, right? And that's great. We, you know, we, that's obviously what we're there for. But everybody really got in the spirit of it, so it was, it was a nice event, and I, I appreciate you guys participating. I know you donated some wraps and everything too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. definitely uh, it's for a great cause, right? So. Yeah, absolutely, man. And uh, yeah, and and a shout out like the autism uh, paints you did, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the legend stuff as well. So. Uh, no, you guys, uh, you're hitting it out of the park, that's for sure. So, um, done on that. So, how long have you been in the league now? It's, a, it's been over a year, right? Yeah, yeah, I think it's been uh, three or four seasons. Um, me and me and Kyle Parker actually ran a league prior to G-Force uh, together. And um, then I came over to G-Force. I, I forgot how I found out about it. Um, but, you know, Kyle and I ran, I think, the first season together. We were just, you know, friends from that previous league. And then uh, we started the team together and um, kind of have grown from there. But yeah, I think it's been three, you know three or four seasons now, so it's been a little while. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, so, what is your uh, what is your forte? What's your best car? That uh, you because you, you you drive all you know most of the stuff we run. Yeah, it really depends on the night. If I'm being honest, um, you know, I, I tend to do okay in the 360s. Um, but as far as probably my favorite car, um, and, and you know, iRacing's made a lot of changes this year to the tire models on the cars. Uh, so you know, that kind of it kind of changed it. Previously, it was definitely the UMPs and the uh, Pro Late models. But uh, yeah, um, but with, no, well, with I've been trying to tell you, I've been trying to tell you, <laughs> a champion, a big fan of the UMPs. A, a champion has endorsed the UMPs. What more can you ask for? <laughs> I know it was, it was kind of sad this, today. I actually ran the two o'clock race. And I think there was there was five of us, and I was like, man, you know, I, I remember when these cars we would fill a server, you know, last season. Um, but yeah, you know, with the new tire model, um, I would probably say the Pro Late model edges out the UMP now. Um, both of them really race like the big block does now. <clears throat> now, so I don't know. They're definitely more temperamental than they uh, they used to be. Um, but I'm hearing more accurate to what they really are on the track. Mm -hmm. That's, I've heard that. So, um, but yeah. you know, not that I've ever driven one, so I've, I'd be <laughs> clueless on that. So, so uh, um, looks like you've got uh, uh, a Logitech G29 yep. or something. Yep, Logitech yeah. G29, and uh, I've got V3 pedals. Yeah, V3 pedals. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of like me. I got well, I got a G27, but the pedals are kick ass. And, and are you running uh, single, triples, BR? What do you run? Yeah, a single 32-inch uh, curved, um, and then as far as the computer, I've got a 2070 Super. Um, I'm sure, like like a lot of people in the league, you know, I've been trying to get a 3000 series card, but yeah, I, I good definitely don't want to play. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to pay three times retail, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you build your own computer? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, me and my brother, we, you know, we like I was telling uh, Roger earlier, you know, we go to World Finals every year. And at World Finals, they have a simulator, you know, that you actually get in and the car moves. Um, you know, so me and my brother talked about it for, for years. And then finally, uh, at the beginning of 2020, we decided we were going to put the money together to build a computer. And then we were going to share it initially. Um, <laughs> yeah, that didn't, it didn't go didn't very last well. Long. Um, didn't last long. Yeah, no. <laughs> so uh, like two or three months after that, we, uh, we built him one that's basically exactly the same. 
Uh, and I'm glad we did it when we did it because once the 3000 series uh, cards drop, you know, pretty much every graphics card right now is hard to come by. Um, but yeah, I, I built it myself. Um, it, it took us about three and a half hours, four hours to put it together and then it didn't start, you know, and, and that's a real frustrating thing, especially when you don't know what you're doing, you know. You can watch all the videos online you want to, but once you actually have the, the plugs in your hand and you're trying to figure out where to plug it in, it's a whole different whole different world. What did it end up being? It ended up being, um, so the, the 24 pin, you know, is split 20 and four. Um, I actually had the four side backwards. Um, so the pin went in, the, right. the 20 pin did, and the four pin went in because I guess the, the holes or the slots are the same reversed. Uh, but yeah, it wouldn't power up uh, with the four pin backwards. So. I, I had a similar one when I built mine. Actually, the first one. This is a this is a rebuild now. But uh, my, I forgot. I did not know there was a separate plug for the CPU power on the motherboard. So I had yep. one just dangling. Didn't know what it went to. And I I worked on it for days before I figured out what it was. Yeah, Which, I was calling all of my all of my friends that build computers, and I'm like, man, I just don't understand what it's doing. And you know, I would send them pictures, but with it plugged in, you couldn't you couldn't see the difference. Right. You know, and they were like. <laughs> So I actually ended up taking a motherboard back uh, to Best Buy where I bought it. I took a power supply back, and it wasn't either one of those. It was the it was the pin. So, um, so how long have you been I racing? Um, since February of 2020. So and, about a year and a half. So you, and you said you're uh, going to share with your brother, and now he's got a machine. So where why isn't he in the league? So he uh, he actually did all of the probationary races last year. Um, I think in the beginning of last season. But okay. he typically doesn't get on until around nine or ten, so he just does a lot of official races, um, and it's kind of hard for him to commit to, to racing on a scheduled night. So, but yeah, every once in a while we'll hop into official races late at night and run some laps together. So, yeah, oh, it'd be great to see him in the league giving you a hard time, you know. Yeah, yeah, he's like <laughs> somebody needs younger. to. Yeah, yeah, and he's my younger brother too, so you know I can't I can't let him show me up too much. <laughs> No, no, that's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, any questions, uh, Preston? Well, yeah, there's one. So, so, and I ask everybody this, and I, I always preface it by saying it doesn't have to be somebody that you don't care for, and it's okay that it is if somebody you don't care for. But let's keep it polite. But who is your biggest rival in the G-Force Racing Leagues? Oh man, I don't know. You know, I feel like I feel like. I don't really have too many too many issues now. You know, I, I did last season. I kind of got myself into a little bit of trouble, but um, I mean, and, well, it doesn't it doesn't have to be somebody that you run into a lot. Like for me, it, Terry Landis and I we're on the same team, but he's probably my biggest rival because we always find ourselves near each other. We can we can be in separate heats. I run the B main, he doesn't. But by the end of the feature, we're right there together. Yeah, I, I would I would say you know, for for the majority of the season, you know, it's been it's been pretty good running with everybody, and, and you know everybody's been really competitive. Um, but I would say recently, um, probably the last four or five weeks, me and John Hahn have seen each other side by side quite a bit. You know, and, and there's been a lot of messages exchanged between him and I, you know, after the race, you know, saying you know, hey, I'm I'm sorry for getting into you in this corner, or, you know, back and forth. But you know, we always run each other really clean. There's no hard feelings towards you, you know, e either way, but. We typically run each other pretty well and, and pretty consistently side by side. So, I would say um, towards the end of the season, it was definitely John Hahn. Yeah, that's a good company to be. In. So, uh, your most memorable i racing moment? <laughs> Probably winning the uh, the the Derby this year. You know, not not winning a, a race in two seasons, and then I, I win the one that I shouldn't win. <laughs> right? It, you know, I, I found it funny after the race. I told the guys on the team, I'm like, look, you know, I can't, I can't seem to win a race that nobody's supposed to touch you, but the race that everybody's supposed to touch you, that's the one that I win. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that was great. <laughs> that's great. And uh, do you have any racing background at all? Yeah, so um, I grew up, um, me and my dad raced RC cars together, um, and that kind of got, you know, got me into, I, like real life cars, I guess, just, you know, street cars and stuff. And then uh, my mom remarried to my, my stepfather and uh, he raced uh, super late models on asphalt. So I grew up uh, in the pits with him and, um, you know, learned about cars, setting up cars, stuff like that. And uh, he's actually from a family of six brothers uh, that all are involved in racing. Um, 
one of my uncles uh, builds late model motors, builds modified motors. Sweet. Uh, another another uncle does wraps uh, for cars. Um, another uncle raced. Now his son is racing. I have the super late model down here at a local track, and um, you know pretty much just all of them. You know uncles that race in go karts and stuff like that. Uh, and then actually, um, my stepdad retired from asphalt racing, and. Uh, me, him, and my brother are actually getting ready to build. Me and my brother are both. Uh, we're going to start in a Super Stock 4. Um, probably, we're shooting for 2023. Um, probably take next year and just build the cars. Um, but we're, we're in the process of getting the funds together. And, and we've already got the chassis, but obviously there's a lot that goes into it. So That's cool, man. So you have to keep us uh, posted in the lounge on uh, the progress there. And uh, that's exciting, man. That's, that's very, very cool. Yeah, so I'm just I'm chalking all this up to practice, you know. At least that's what I tell my wife. Yeah. So. Well, that that just makes me feel like as someone who's raced against you, that when you get out there on the real track, I can take some semblance of credit for your success. <laughs> so. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> well, man, just uh, want to thank you for uh, coming on and uh, congratulations on uh, that 305 championship. It was. It was such a, a well attended. I mean, it was, it was a battle just to make a feature a lot of nights, uh, especially yeah. early in the season when we had 40 car counts and stuff. And uh, you know, a little bit of bad luck, and uh, you know, you'd be on the outside looking in. So, uh, great job on that. And uh, you know, I race in the rebels with you, but I never see it because you're at the front and I'm at <laughs> the back. But uh, uh, you know, good luck uh, on championship night for a good finish. I know you say you don't think you can win, but uh, top three in the in the finals and. Uh, yeah. It's always great seeing you, great seeing you on the track, and I uh, appreciate everything uh, your rap company does, your 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 team does for the league, and uh, it, it's good to have you guys around. So uh, congratulations on uh, the victory, and uh, I'll see you if not sooner, I'll see you Monday night at, with the Rebels Championship. Yep, that works. Thank you guys for putting all this on as well. Absolutely, buddy. Congrats. It's our pleasure, man. And as Joe White would say, we're here with the Skittles machine. Blake Chapman, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Yeah, just uh, fre pretty much fresh off the track from uh, your 410 uh, championship, and I uh, want to congratulate you on that. It was uh, it was it wasn't even a question coming into tonight. You were so dominant that uh, um, there were no question that it was it was it was yours yours to win. You couldn't even lose it. I don't think so. Uh, that and uh, I, I see a little bit of hardware in behind you too so it looks like uh this is not your first uh trip around so uh congrats buddy thank you appreciate it so uh, a couple other things um next monday night the big one i mean you know this is the the uh the the, the top of the mountain for our league the renegades division which you just got into i think this season and uh, looks like you've got one heck of a shot. I think you're currently in first place, are you not? Yes, yeah, I think only by 20 or 30 points, but yeah, it's uh, first. And, yeah. and who's, who are you ahead of? Oh, uh, Lane Snook. He's right oh, behind Lane. Me. Yeah, yeah, okay, so it's, that, that's going to be a, a real interesting one on Monday night, and that'll cap off, really cap off our season, so I uh, want to wish you good luck on that. But, um, you know, lots to talk about with you. You've really uh, stepped your game up. Like in the, how long have you been with us? Maybe three seasons or just two seasons? Uh, I believe my first season was the summer season of 2020, so just a couple of seasons. Okay, but this this last season, you you notched it up, man. Uh, you know, you came into uh, you had you had done. I, I don't think you won Rebels last season, did you? Like you had you were in the top five. And uh, you moved yeah, up. I think I was yeah. in the top five. I don't think I won that. No. Yeah, yeah, and um, but unbelievable like i thought okay he's gonna be competitive but like right out of the gate you were uh you're right at the the front leading the pack and uh and, and it was good to see and, and i and nothing against the bandy boys the bandy boys are great racers but you know they're so dominant it's kind of like uh you know the the dynasty and uh and here comes this kid and he's uh knocking him down so it's uh it's been great to see great to see that the kid from clarence iowa population 897 a hotbed for the G-Force Racing League, <laughs> um, we've got uh, the mayor is in is in the league, Steve Bixler, and uh, I, I'm still trying to get a handle on Steve Maurer. Like he's, I don't know if he owns the phone company, 
Then I see stuff about farms on his car. Like, does he own the whole town, or what's going on there? <laughs> yeah, he might. He might as well. But uh, yeah, he runs the phone company. And he's got uh, Mauer Farm Management, and yeah, Steve Bixler. He puts that on his car, and yeah, it's pretty cool. So, he's got so, his, so I have to ask. Group. Roger might be a little more familiar with this than I am. With the population of that size, I'm assuming you guys got into the league by word of mouth or something, right? Like you had to have known, okay, because there's no way we just randomly got three guys from this tiny little town and they just were all ended up in the same league. That, that, that can't happen. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Steve Maurer and uh, Steve Bixler, they've been friends for a long time, and Maurer got a set up, so Bixler, he decided to get a set up, and I believe Bixler was in the league first. Yeah, he and was. Then, uh, yeah, I got a set up, and he told me about G-Force, and it was a competitive league, so I decided to get in, and then I believe Steve Maurer was the last one to get in. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so, so there, I, I see those boys every day with the retreads, you know, where uh, we have a lot of good good times in there, but... Um, so this yeah, championship, been, uh, this championship might be in the local paper then, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> he might get some sort of special presentation uh, at Town Hall, you know, because the mayor... That's there right. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, so here's the problem. I, I live in a fairly small town, too, so it's not often I get to knock on somebody for living in a smaller town than me, so I have to take every well, advantage I can here. Well, what, what's the population of your place, uh, Preston? You know what? I, Hale, I'm, Hale at Virginia. I'm embarrassed to tell you I'm not exactly sure. It's, it's grown considerably yeah. in the last few years, so I, I really don't know at the moment. Yeah, I, I came from a town that was like uh, Stony Creek, which was like population 6,000. And you Ours know, is and, probably right around that. Yeah, but now the population of Stony Creek is probably like 100,000. You know, it's just stupid. But uh, I love small, I, I, you know, I raise my kids in small towns. I love small towns. So I'm, we're, we're definitely not knocking you, buddy, because as far as I'm concerned, you live in God's country. And speaking of God's country, you're just down the road from Knoxville Speedway, right? Yeah, about two and a half hours probably a little bit less than that yeah, but i've never that, been there myself oh you haven't no shame Steve on Dixon. you that close yeah i'm hoping to go this summer so yeah i have not i haven't been in knoxville but i've been to the field of dreams so i mean that was uh, that was on my bucket list to get to the field yeah, of dreams cool. yeah it is cool so what uh, in the real world do you do you do anything in the in the uh, regular racing world or I've never been inside a real race car myself, but my dad raced. He raced for years. Oh, here we and go. There's always brother, a connection. And my brother races right now. And, uh, you know, Steve Bixler, he helped my dad out his whole career pretty much. So, What you know, did your dad drive? He drived uh, Modifieds most okay. of the time. Okay. And your brother? He drives Modifieds as well, Sport Mods. Okay. That's cool, man. So, yeah. uh, so, so you're in the pits with him? Uh, I'm starting to get in the pits with them a little bit more. Well, my brother right now, you know, I'm trying to learn how to set up the car and help him out a little bit. But, you know, every Friday night I'd be over at the local track helping my dad, you know. So I grew up around racing, and once I heard that, you know, I racing was a thing, I decided why not give it a shot. You know, we got uh, uh, a guy used to be in our league, Tanner Van Doren, who's like, he might be 14 now, tearing up the Northeast like he's he's been just been rated one of the top 10 drivers in the Northeast. And then we got Lane Snook, you know, state go kart champion. So, buddy, uh, based on the way you're driving in our league, you need to you need to kick your brother out of that car and get behind the wheel and see what you can do, man. Yeah, I'll need to show him this podcast. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. We're gonna start a we're gonna start a write-in campaign. Uh, you know, down in Clarence. Uh, that yeah. uh, you know, you, you should be in his car and see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, so, sounds like uh, a good idea to me. Yeah. So I'm a little bit disappointed, though. I mean, you know, we had the um, the uh, in there. I forget. It's not the smarty of the um, skittles. Your, skittles. Skittles. <laughs> Jeez, what's the matter with me? Skittles car. And they. But then you went to another brand for a while. You had another car. What was that? Yeah, well, that's when I joined Wide Open Motorsports, those guys down there, and uh, I switched wraps. You know, I kind of got away from the Skittles because, you know, sponsors and all that on the car. You know, yeah, yeah. maybe eventually yeah. one day I'll go back. Now, yeah, you, you I mean, did have an M&M's car for briefly, at least, right? That's what it was. Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. I knew there was another car. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I ran the Skittles in the 360 and the uh, M&M's in the 305. Yeah, I remember seeing the M&M's shoot past me at one point. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, 
So, so, and, and who are you racing with now? Uh, wide Open Motorsports. Wide Open. So you thought, where, hopefully they watch this podcast. Those guys need to know, you need to get those Skittles back on. I mean, that's the car that launched you into, you know, you went from, like, middle of the pack to, like, domination. It was the Skittles mobile. You know, Joe made it famous even. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're going to start a writing campaign for uh, the Skittles machine to return. So um, anyways, but the, you've been just... You've been just running incredible, man, and uh, um, excited for you to win that dominating 410. But, uh, you know, I'm pulling for you on Monday night. You know, I hope the bandies don't beat me up and stuff, but I, I think it's just great that this, this new face has arrived on the scene and, uh, you know, is uh, challenging all the uh, the old guys. Well, except for Lane. Lane's not an old guy, but and it's kind of funny. You know, you two would be two of the youngest. How old are you now? 16. 16, yeah. So two of the younger guys in the league, you know, the average age, the last time I checked, was 38. So the two of you have been dominating that uh, league. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should be pulling for the old guys on Monday night, you know, just to uh, the, uh, Level the, the old guy. Well, yeah, you know, the, <laughs> look at the Indy 500, man. You know, it's just uh, old guys rule. So anyway, so great run uh, tonight. You know, great finish. That was a, that was a tough race, though. So. Um, yeah. The four four tens. That was I don't know how many cautions we had. But, a lot. Uh, a lot. Yeah. Where, where did you start well, in that race? I started on the pole. So do you, you think the, the I mean, granted, nobody wants the cautions, even the guy on the pole, because you want to get out there and race. But do you think that helped? I mean, because it, it nobody just nobody had a chance to get into into a rhythm really in my the way I saw it. Yeah, it, it might have helped a little bit. I guess some guys up front got taken out that might have been able to pass me, but. You know, either way, it's frustrating when, you know, I think I'm faster than everybody else and caution's constantly flying. Mm -hmm. Interesting, he said, I'm faster than everybody else, but we're all running the same setup in the fixed car. Yeah. You know, this, yeah, I noticed that too. So, so tell, us, tell us about your, your rig and what you run, what kind of wheel, pedals. Well, I'm not exactly sure what model they are, but I know they're Fanatec wheels, and I've had them since the start, and I just really love them. And I moved to triple monitors here about two months ago, and I really love them. You, I was just on a single before. Do you think? Do you think that's attributed to some of you getting faster as, as moving from a single to triples? Definitely. I, I, mean, if, I love these. If I'm not mistaken, because I, I can tell you, like obviously the Kreitz guys, you know, we, we run against you every week now, pretty much, and uh, and we noticed you getting faster. And I think somebody said maybe a shorty. I don't know if you had talked to him or something said that you know you just jumped up to triples, and uh, we said, oh, I wonder if that's it because it, I do think it makes a big difference just that extra perspective and kind of you get the field of view more natural. Um, you were fast enough before that, so now now it's just a little bit unfair. Yeah, God help us if he gets VR. Yeah, you know, right. all, everybody's fine. Yeah, have you so tried VR before? I've never tried VR. I think it might make me sick. Yeah, honestly. I think it'd make you sick. Don't worry about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it would make me sick, and it didn't. So give it a try, buddy. You know, and uh, you know, if you need that extra tenth of a second or something, I'm sure it's there in VR. But, uh, yeah, if you just stick with those uh, triples. And uh, uh, so i got to ask you the question, you know, uh, your most memorable moment in iRacing. Oh, I've had a couple probably. Uh, you know, I know I've raced against Brent Marks, who's an actual sprint car driver. Oh, yeah. That was like when I first yeah. started, and it was pretty cool. But uh, I'd have to say my most memorable uh, moment was probably uh, when I was racing with a different league, and me and this guy came so close on the checkered, and the difference was 0. 0.000. So pretty much it was a tie. But I ended up getting second somehow. So it was frustrating, but it was but cool. At the same time, it's still memorable, even though it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, so I'll ask my question: Who would you say is your biggest rival in the G-Force Racing Leagues? And before you answer, I clarify this every time: It doesn't have to be somebody you don't get along with. It's it can be, but just generally, like who do you find yourself around, or 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 whatever? Who's your biggest rival? Ah, oh, man, that's tough. Uh... Well, I love racing with everybody in the league. I've got a problem with nobody. But uh, I'd just say just because of the standings where we're at in points, I'd have to say Lane Snook. Yeah. Because, you know, 
we've been one and two in the four tens and renegades almost the whole season. Yeah. Well, and and it it doesn't hurt that you guys are two again, like Roger was saying, two of the younger guys in the league, and you got something to prove, you know. But you know what? I want to clear. I want to. I want to point out something you you said is that you don't have a problem with anybody. I think most of our top guys have had a run in with somebody at some point. Like and it, it happens, right? I mean, I've had those happen, and I'm not a top guy, but you're right. I I don't know that I've ever seen any kind of recurring like stuff with any one driver with you like it just it's not something that happens so kudos to you for i mean you do run clean there's no doubt about that and uh there's there's plenty of guys in our league that can't say they run quite as clean as you do yeah i just don't take it personally you know <laughs> i mean right they take me out and they say they're sorry you know move on right that's right yes. but, and and yeah. you're, you'll end up with better results with an attitude like that for sure yeah um White, white Open Motorsports. So, so who's all on that team? Uh, there's Scott Herwood. Uh, he sponsored the 410 division, I believe, yep. this season. Uh, yep. Chris Forsyth, Christopher Schaefer, Tyler Wilson, uh, Jay Giddings, Andrew Beach, Trevor Garrox, uh, co-owners uh, Zane Walters and Trent Verstraten, and uh, Patrick Spangler. He just ran with 410s with me. So. Oh, cool. No, yeah. no. That's it. No, I'm, I might be, if, if I'm just wrong, just say I'm wrong. But I thought Nick King was on wide open with you guys, too. Am I wrong about that? Uh, no. Oh, yeah, well. you're wrong. Okay. Well. He was he was on Need, Need for Speed, but I think they uh, they broke into two teams or something. And, oh, okay. Uh, I can't keep uh, up with all that drama. I know, I know, yeah. So, uh, anyways, uh, it, it's been great having you on, buddy. Uh, you've been on our list. To uh, talk to uh, for a while now, actually. So uh, this was the perfect night. Um, we might have a chance to talk to you next week after the Renegades race. So uh, good luck next Monday night. That's that's the big Kahuna there, and uh, then you're you're king of the hill if uh, if you can win that one, buddy. So uh, good luck to, to that. And uh, it's been really enjoyable watching you, uh, you know, work your way through the up the ladder, really, and uh, and then become so dominant. That was. That was a pleasant surprise. I knew you would be competitive. I didn't think you'd be dominant. Like that was, you upped your game significantly. So, uh, you know, you 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 are the star of Clarence, Iowa. So uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll hopefully we'll see something in the paper where you get your, your award presented. Uh, you know, it's at town hall. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll have to talk to Steve Bickler about that. Yeah, get we'll, that set up. We'll put in a word too. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll pressure them in the day, day league. So, anyways. Cool. Yep. Yeah, well, thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks really, for yeah, coming on, Blake. It was, it was a pleasure. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Good luck, buddy. Thank you. So we're back. How you doing, buddy? No, it's it's my turn. <laughs> okay. Two, one. What's up, everybody? Okay.